Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you this drawing of Batman. And I'm also going to test some new materials I bought. This is the Kohino Joconda Silky Black drawing pencil. It comes in three grades. So I chose this subject to test these. I'm going to talk a little bit about the pencils and of course I'm going to take you through the drawing process. So these are the pencils. Um, they look pretty much like black colored pencils and they feel like black colored pencils. They can be sharpened pretty well so they don't break easily. They are not as soft as charcoal uh, and they come in three different grades. Now the designation here is silky black and uh, the grades are one, two and three. And I know that Joconda had a black pencil called Negro, but I don't know if it's the same pencil. I guess it is. And I don't really know uh, what the difference is between the grades, so we're going to test them out a little bit and see how they work and how they feel. So I'm going to try to describe it to you. I'm going to start with, uh, uh, with the number one. So this is number one. First I'm going to do a couple of strokes as if I were shading something just a few strokes so this one it feels uh, kind of soft and smooth and it's uh, pretty dark and this this is what happens when i press a little bit harder so they are a little bit reflective when you look at this from an angle uh, but they are not nearly as reflective as graphite so they're very similar to uh, colored pencils. So let me try uh, grade number two. Again, a few strokes like this. It feels almost the same. I honestly don't think there is much of a difference. And this one is probably almost as dark. I let me try to draw a little bit next to this one. So this was number one, this is number two. I honestly don't see much of a difference. Let me go back to trying number one. Number one feels a little bit softer and a little bit crumblier. So this one is just a little bit harder. It probably has a little bit more of that binder, whatever material. So let me try grade number three. Um, this one feels a little bit harder and the mark is a, a little bit lighter. It's almost, I'm not going to say like a graphite pencil, uh, but it's definitely not as dark as the other two. So if I had to do some kind of a quick comparison, I would say that this Joconda Silky Black 8815 grade 1 is the softest one and probably the darkest one and uh, number 2 is very similar and uh, also pretty dark but not quite as soft and number 3 is a little bit lighter and uh, if I remember correctly I read that uh, they were meant for portraits so if you were doing a portrait I guess Number three would be used for shading some lighter areas, number two for something in between, and number three would be and number one would be for the for the darkest bits. But honestly, uh, they kind of feel very similar to one another, so there's not that much difference. And like I said, they they are very much like a black colored pencil. They're kind of similar to like let's say a uh, Faber Castell polychromos. I'm going to try to do most of my sketch with a number 3 pencil because that's one that one seems to be the lightest one. The size of the paper is 9 times 12 inches. And you can see my reference photo in the top left corner if you want to check that out. Now one of the things that I forgot to do when I was doing my initial 
test on that smaller piece of paper. Uh, I forgot to check how well they can be erased and from what I can tell I think they can be erased pretty easily especially with a pencil eraser and I'm using a Kohinoor eraser in a pencil most of the time I mostly use a kneaded eraser for cleaning up uh, but they are not that difficult to erase even though they are fairly dark as for how they feel when you draw with them on the paper they feel pretty much like a regular black colored pencil, I already told you that, and they are pretty dark and matte in terms of their appearance. <coughs> so I'm doing my sketch, and once I finish that, I'm going to move on with some darker values. I'm going to use some of these darker pencils start the shading process. I'm going to start with some shading but just a warning I wanted to start with this darker area here and I wanted to use this number one crate and it broke slightly when I wanted to resharpen it so this one is definitely the softest. But let's see how it works. So I'm starting with the ears using my darkest pencil. And I always have a piece of glassine paper under my hand to prevent smudging, even though these pencils don't really smudge that much. Uh, but it's always a good idea to put something under, under your hand just to minimize the smudging. Uh, now I also have to explain why I picked this subject to test these pencils with. I had a phase several years ago when I was drawing with only one pencil. I only did drawings with a black colored pencil. These were usually Faber-Castell black colored pencils. And these are very similar to those in terms of uh, in terms of the mark they leave on the paper. And I noticed during that phase that one of the weaknesses of the black colored pencil was a, a drawing or covering large dark areas, especially when you need to make smooth transitions from very dark areas to lighter areas. Uh, this is much, much more easily done with charcoal. It's much faster and you can blend without leaving too much texture. But with black colored pencils, this requires a lot more patience and there's usually a bit more texture left, so some of the lines are always a little bit more visible. So I picked this subject where there are a lot of these darker areas and where I'll need to push myself to make smooth transitions from, from very dark areas to light areas because I wanted to see how well these drawing pencils would perform because um, I wanted to see if they were any different from regular black colored pencils and honestly from what I can tell and I already started to become aware of that at this stage while I was shading the upper part of his helmet. Uh, from what I could tell, they are not that different from black colored pencils because uh, they are very difficult to blend and they cover large areas slowly so you have to be patient and you, you have to use a tapered stroke and cross-hatching if you want to achieve smooth transitions. Now of course I won't be doing that all of the time. Sometimes I'll be blending a little bit more quickly and carelessly and I'll be trying to blend that uh, with my blending tools. 
and the blending tools which in my opinion work best for pushing that pigment from this black pencil around were hard bristle brushes with a crop tip so you'll notice that I'm using these brushes which have a very short flat tip and these are hard bristle brushes and they can move this stubborn pigment a bit more easily uh, I'm not really sure how much I'm damaging the paper while I'm doing that but I found that this was the only way I could actually uh, push that darker color around and create these slightly smoother transitions so you can see this top part here top part of the helmet and around the forehead area I initially tried blending that with some q-tips and some tertillions and I wasn't really happy with the results because I kind of shaded that very quickly without using uh, a proper technique without shading uh, slowly and carefully using a tapered stroke and because I shaded it in such a careless manner I produced a, a I produced a lot of this ugly texture which I don't want I want the top of the helmet to appear fairly smooth so eventually I had to do my best to blend that and like I said this is where these hard bristle brushes helped a lot because I found that if I were persistent enough I could actually push the pigment from those darkest areas to the lighter areas gradually removing a lot of that texture but one of the things that definitely helps and by the way here I'm pulling some highlights using that Ko Kohinoor eraser in a pencil one of the things that definitely helps with black colored pencils is of course shading gradually building up the darker values slowly and gradually using a tapered stroke which is what I'm doing here I'm kind of trying to fix the mess I made by using a slightly more controlled method of shading using a tapered stroke and cross hatching and that way you can build up the value a little bit more gradually avoiding the ugly texture and kind of um, creating a texture that's a little bit easier to smooth out and to blend using your blending tools so basically when it comes to the way these pencils perform they perform just like regular black colored pencils they are not charcoal pencils they do not blend well they are not very good at creating smooth transitions or covering large areas that's it they are just regular black colored pencils that's at least my impression I'm working on the eyes here and I zoomed in a little bit so like I said this Batman is based on Christian Bale's Batman from Batman Begins and the other movies in that trilogy so in addition to achieving the likeness with the helmet and the costume I'm also going to try to achieve some uh, some likeness with the uh, with the actor's face or at least um, the the face that, that that's visible from under the mask and the mask has a very interesting design with a lot of the a lot of these interesting transitions from dark uh, very dark values to lighter values it it is a little bit shiny but it's mostly matte it's supposed to be made out of some some type of composite materials I don't really know I haven't seen a movie I, I've seen it years ago so I don't really remember 
uh, what they said the helmet was made of but it's a very nice looking menacing looking costume with lots of interesting details so here I'm doing the other eye and shading the area around the eye and notice that because I have some reflections or some catch light in those eyes as usual in order for the highlight in the eye to stand out you need to shade all of the eyeball and I shaded the eyeballs with a little bit more value because uh, because they are also in the shadow so um, I I'm switching between different pencils here. I'm using all three grades, just trying to see uh, how dark or how light they are. And honestly, the only thing that I really noticed was that number three was a little bit harder and lighter than the other two. I couldn't really tell much difference between number one and number two, other than the fact that number one, number one felt a little bit softer and a little bit more crumbly so I try to avoid using number one when I needed to draw straight clean lines and I will just use it use it uh, to go back and to um, go over some of the areas which are supposed to be darker and honestly I used number two for pretty much 80% or at least 70% of the drawing process. That was my all-around uh, drawing and shading pencil during this process because that number two was the one that was most similar to the black colored pencils that I used before. In terms of how it's applied to the paper and the quality of the mark it leaves on the paper. Now I have to tell you another thing, uh, here by the way I'm making a transition from a very very dark pitch black area to a slightly slightly less dark area and you can see that I've also produced a lot of texture in that area but I was able to smooth that out using a combination of a tapered stroke and blending with my hard bristle brushes. I later picked up one of the brushes with an even shorter cropped tip and that seemed to be doing the job really well and I got some really smooth transitions with that but like I said in the process I'm probably damaging the surface of the paper a little bit but I didn't really care about that too much because the area was pretty dark anyway so it's not like I was going to do uh, many corrections on it so I was pretty happy with the way it uh, came out. Now one of the things that I wanted to tell you was that I experienced some more breakage during the drawing process. Uh, when I tried sharpening even the, the other two, not just the number one but also the number two and number three, they both broke a couple of times and uh, the sharpener that I was using was almost new, almost brand new. So I had to switch to a, a completely brand new sharpener which was super sharp and then the breaking stopped. Um, so I'm not really happy about that because uh, these pencils are the lead inside them is really really soft and delicate in my opinion and that's one of the disadvantages, that's one of the things that I don't like because um, I, I don't really care too much about brands I already told you that many many times but one of the things that I like about my pencils is that they can be sharpened I really don't like to don't like when I have to spend a lot of time sharpening or worrying about how I'm going to sharpen my pencils because sharpening is something that should be done quickly and preferably with a regular handheld sharpener and here I did experience some problems which occasionally made me kind of hesitant 
to resharpen my pencils which is why I had to work with a dull pencil a little bit longer than usual here and there and I don't really like that because that kind of prevents me from creating a very accurate looking or a very detailed drawing and uh, that's one of the disadvantages of these pencils so that's one of the things I didn't like I'm not saying they are bad pencils they're actually very very pleasant to work with they're very nice black drawing pencils but I don't like the fact that you have to be so careful when sharpening them I find that very annoying and one of the things I liked about some of the other black color pencils which I used in the past and I mostly used Faber-Castell is that they are very very easy to sharpen and I experienced very little breakage with those so if I had to compare these pencils with a Faber-Castell black color pencil I would definitely say that the Faber-Castell black color pencil is, is superior to these it also costs about twice as much uh, but it's definitely better in my opinion so here I did the mouth and now I'm slowly shading the area around the mouth first putting in some of the indications of shapes of the lips and the muscles around the lips and those wrinkles around the lip, uh, around the lips and then I'm going to put down a little bit more value and blend that in a little bit and then I'm just going to go over the darker areas one more time to push the range of value and to define the shape of the lower part of the face a little bit better because right now it looks a little bit ugly and also uh, define some of these shadows because the right side of the face is a little bit darker than the left side and uh, to put a little bit more value into those lips especially on the upper lip and a little bit more shadow under the lower lip and maybe um, a bit more shadow under the chin so that I can define the overall shape of the face so <clears throat> as you can see I've pretty much done the review of the pencils while I was explaining the drawing process I'm going to finish the drawing with these pencils because like I said they are pretty decent pencils but there are some things I didn't like so much um, and another thing that I have to mention uh, let me just say let me just explain what I'm doing here um, I thought the, the pupils or rather the irises were a little bit too light here so I des decided to add a bit more value to the eyes because once I shaded the whole of the all of the mask and the face the eyes ended up being a little bit lighter than I expected so that's a value interaction that's what happens sometimes you have to go back and redo some of the some of the parts of the face you which you already thought you you, you finished but that was quickly fixed so uh, one of the things that I also have to tell you is that this particular drawing would be done much much faster with charcoal pencils so the, the whole drawing process which here I compressed into about a half an hour took about three hours to complete and with, uh, with, it, with charcoal pencils I, I'm pretty sure it would be less than two hours so the shading process especially for the darker areas and for the transitions between the darker areas to the lighter areas would be much 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 quicker but because this is a black colored pencil 
this process was a lot slower and uh, blending was a lot more difficult but like I said I deliberately picked this subject because I wanted to push myself to try to make the most out of these pencils and you know that in most of my drawings I normally combine charcoal pencils with a black color pencil I would say that these black color pencils uh, would work really well in combination with the charcoal but honestly I wouldn't use them alone if I were doing a subject that has so many dark areas like th this one for a regular portrait I think they would actually be pretty good but for a subject like this I would definitely prefer to use charcoal so I only did this for testing purposes here and this is why the drawing process was quite a bit longer and more difficult than it could have been if I had used charcoal but like I said colored pencils they give you a lot more precision and they are cleaner than charcoal so, so some people who don't mind the fact that they, that they take a little bit more time maybe they would actually prefer to work with these black pencils So yeah, those are the Gioconda artists' black pencils. Here I'm doing this area uh, on the neck, um, which has some kind of a pattern. There, there are some mesh or meshed areas of his uh, body armor that kind of look like uh, that. Um, suit from the from the computer game crisis and um, I'm going to speed up the video where I'm doing the rest of the the rest of his uh, suit here because I uh, thought that me drawing the head and the helmet was probably a lot more interesting to most of the viewers so I'm going to go over this part a little bit more quickly because I'm uh, more or less doing the same thing I've already explained my approach to shading and uh, my overall impression of the black pencils that I'm using so I'm going to speed this up a little bit but like I said the whole drawing process took took uh, a little bit longer I think it was around three hours or so uh, which I consider to be long because the, co the, the the subject is not overly complex there are some details on the suit and the helmet but it's uh, it's not too complicated the, the, the main problem were these large black areas which needed a lot of shading and blending so right now I'm working on these details on the neck and the rest of the suit and this uh, right side of the neck and the body as well as the head is a lot darker so I used a lot of that number one pencil initially and then I tried to make a relatively smooth transition by moving on to number two and number three and of course I used the hard bristle brushes to blend the the transitions in between those dark areas and the lighter areas um, as you can see I didn't draw all the way to the edge of the paper so my drawing is a vignette and I like doing vignettes and I'm fading these edges using my erasers and brushes so I'm basically putting down some of the finishing touches basically just uh, making some of these parts of the armor a little bit smoother and there's another part of that mesh area um, here around the chest so those are just some of the finishing touches I am going to put my signature in the lower right corner and wrap things up. 
So that was my drawing of Batman. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to give me a like and comment and subscribe. And if you want to see longer video, you can check out my Patreon. And also don't forget to check out my other videos. I zoomed in a little bit so that you can see the drawing a little bit better. So the final summary of these pencils that I use today, they are pretty good drawing pencils, pretty good black pencils, very similar to regular colored pencils. Nothing special, but pretty good pencils. Uh, the only thing that I didn't really like about them was the fact that they are a little bit difficult to sharpen. So that will be all for now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.